let's start exploring how to make images with a text to image generator. In this particular demo, I'm using Midjourney. I have a paid Midjourney account. All of these generators are built on the open AI platform. So they all have a small differences, but conceptually they're all very similar. So just stick to the core concepts here. Let's start with on mid journey, you need to run a prompt. So you'll see in the bottom here, you do a slash and then type imagine. And that's you telling the system that you want it to make an image. When you've done that, it then gives you the space to actually fill in your prompt. Now let's work through from simple to slightly more complex so you can really get a sense of how prompting works. So imagine an apple. And that's all we put. Now let's see what it's going to do. Mid journey creates four images at a time, each one being varied from the others to help you get into your options and start finding a direction to head in. So rather than just giving you one image at a time, gives you four, it helps you work in into the process a little bit quicker, which is, is great. All right. So, and it will start to show you the rendering and you can see the percentage is now 62%. When it gets all the way to a hundred percent, it'll kick it to the very bottom of the feed, but we can already see how this is developing, right? Four apples, all red, one with leaves on it, all with a little bit of water droplets, some more than others, one with an active, more like, like image, a scenic background. The others with just black backgrounds. Okay. So all very similar, right? Because all we asked for is an apple. Now, what if you were like, yeah, I don't want just an apple though. I wanted an apple in a market, right? So you go, all right, well, you got to give it more language. So imagine an apple at a farmer's market and let's see what it does just add a little more language and it will generate again now what the system is doing is it's taking the language and running it through what the ai understands to be common things associated with those words with those language constructions so the tricky thing is is language isn't exact for everyone, right? So it's doing the best it can based on the way it's been programmed and we'll see how, what it, what it spits out. Now, the other cool thing is while you're waiting for your images to render and be created, you can learn about how to do more prompting. Cause you see, you're not the only person on the server. There's a constant stream of images being created and you can look at the prompts that people are creating and you can learn about prompt engineering by watching other people's prompts. But okay, now we gave it a more specific prompt. Now you see none of the pictures have black backgrounds. They all have some kind of a, a background that fits the prompt better. One, we've got the stack of apples. Three, we've got just a single apple. You can see the background of the market in the background, right? More detail, more language produce more detail. Now, the next thing you can do is, you, you notice they're all defaulting to realistic. If you were like, well, I don't really want realistic. I wanted something more artsy. You can just tell it. You do language that um, defines that style. So imagine a painting of an apple at a farmer's market. And we could say, well, you know what? Let's just do painting without naming a, a particular artist. And let's see what it does. You can name, you know, th the system has been taught about all of the major artists they they've programmed it all and they've had it look at those kinds of art styles so you can say a painting in the style of van gogh a painting in the style of monet you can you can do all of that and it will it will do it in those styles 
You can ask for a, a pencil drawing, an ink drawing, cartoon drawing. All right, so now we've got interesting. We've got realistic paintings that are coming through almost like photorealistic, but they are more, they're in a painting style though still. There's the color and the texture is a little different. Very interesting. Okay, and so you say, ah, it's still not what I was really looking for. Uh, you know, it's just a constant process. So now you could say, imagine a painting in the style of Monet painting language at the front gets more emphasis on the creation. So a painting of an apple in the style of Monet and I don't want a square. The default you'll notice here is square images. You can change the aspect ratio. So I'm going to go dash dash AR for aspect ratio and I'm going to change it to 16 9 which is a longer horizontal, sort of like if you turn your phone in horizontal mode to watch TV or movie on your phone, that's 16.9. So now we'll generate another version. The trick is I'm, I'm doing this in small chunks to try to show you. Obviously, you want to get what you want as quick as you can get it. So the better thing, the best thing to do is to plan out what you really want in advance and have your prompt as well engineered as soon as possible and then make a couple of small tweaks if you need to. All right, now it's starting to create. Here's the new version it's creating. Okay, now we get something that looks much more like a painting not quite as impressionist as I would have expected, but still much more like a painting. All right, so now let's say this was my goal all along and I got it to where I wanted. Now you pick which of the four is most fitting what you had in your mind's eye, right? So let's say that it's the quadrants are upper left is one, Upper right is two, lower left is three, lower right is four. And these buttons, the V's are variation and the U is upscale. These are previews. You can't download these right now. They're all kind of together. When you know which one you want, you hit upscale and it will give you the full sized version of that image that you want. If you're like, oh, we're so close, but I just wanna see if I can get a little bit more out of it, that's where you hit the variation button. So let's say I really like two. I like the composition and the look of two. So I hit variation two, and it's now gonna generate four new images that are all much more closely designed to the one that I'm saying I like, which is upper right, it's two. So now it's gonna make four, here it goes, like that, and we'll see if we get lucky and it gets just a little bit better. Sometimes you have to change the language to get it to what's in your mind's eye. You just have to change the language, but sometimes it's just letting it have a couple tries at it and seeing what it produces like for example now okay you've got one where the apples over to the left you've got one where it's almost in the center you've got one where well one where another one where it's almost in the center and one where it's kind of more over to the right and so now you've got a different kind of compositional look and you know you can go with yeah i really like this one so let's say the, now what is in upper left, which is one, let's say that's the one I like and I want to keep it. I'm going to hit U1 to upscale it and it's going to make me a upscaled version with the quality that I want 
right? And so now what I do is I click on it. It gives me a full display version. And then I right click and save image as. And I just save it. And now I have it. It's downloaded and I can use it. That's the basic version of what we're doing. That's your basic, how you get from an idea to a finished product with one of these generators. It's a good start.